is a uh, 2022 E180. So we've been building this pump um, basically since 1968. We brought it to America in 1981. There's only been one change on this pump. So if you guys are familiar with the Harbin and working with the Harbin, there's literally no difference at all. So the most important things to know when you're starting this machine up is basically that you need to have an open circuit. Alrighty. Um, if there's any kind of vacuum on the system at all, it'll uh, hit one of these diaphragms and we're going to have to replace the diaphragms. So every time, every time we start the machine, we do a check here. We do the filter check, unscrew this off, basically. Screws right out. Check it, make sure it looks good. Everything looks fine. Put her back in. Hand tighten, alrighty. Open it back up, we're good to go. Alrighty, so that brings us around over here to this part. Alright, so the part that, uh, kind of the uh, jetter runners, you guys come here. Alrighty, so. You wanna open up that garage? Yeah, I think he is. It's unlocked, I think it's unlocked. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, you guys can kind of stand around. Yeah. yeah. All righty, so we going? We're good. All righty, cool. So the one that's not labeled is your power toggle. All right. Cool. Your code with these two, this is how you get to your numbers. Your code is two. Enter moves it over. One, two, zero, one, zero. All righty. Have you read the safety? You're going to assume that you have. All righty. Once your control panel lets up, I always come and take another look. Make sure my panel's open. We're good to go. Open the bleed nozzles. Green means go. There's a three second delay. Then our system ramps up. Come over here. Make sure that the water's in, that the air is blown out of the system. Really, really simple, guys. Rabbit is up. And the rubber engine up. Our PSI is directly going to correlate to our RPMs already. Engine down. And what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and shut it off now. We're going to run the line out so you can actually see the water on, water on, off, and whatnot. So. All right, so the hose and everything is exactly the same. So you've got all the way down, or all the way down is detent, where you can just pull it out manually. All righty. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and start it back up again. So again, just start it up. The one that's not labeled is your main power toggle. All righty, that goes on. All righty. Then you have to put in your code. Your code is 2010. You get to those numbers by these, these uh, arrows here. So we're gonna go to two. The enter button moves the cursor along. One more time. 2010. We've read the safety stuff. Yes. Alrighty. I always check to make sure I have an open circuit every single time I start the machine. Looks good. Green means go. There's a three second delay and we're good to go. Alrighty. So now, once the power is running, you've got the same hydraulic hose grip. So in, out. Here's your speed, speed adjustable. Here's your speed adjustable right here. See? All right, then if, uh, you wanna just hold that for me out that way? All righty, so, got the hose out, looks good. Let's turn the water on. So the water on is this yellow button, which takes the place of the manual handle that you used to have, all righty? Water on, water's gonna serve. There's a little bit of cavitation, sounds like there's a little bit of air in there. Full looks good, you see how it's solid. So it's going to directly correlate your PSI with your RPM. All righty. A little bit of air in there. Rabbit's up. Ah. 
<laughs> I was like, what happened? <laughs> Turtle is down. Water on off is yellow. Water cuts out. Stop shuts the engine down. Alrighty. That makes sense? Does that have any questions at all so far? Looks good? Yeah. What position is that bypass valve in? All the way closed. Is it? Okay. Yeah, well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. We were messing with that. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, so we could, we just usually leave it closed when you're doing normal operation. And then, like, if you're using a mini jet kit, you've got a smaller head on there. It'll tend to overpressurize. You just adjust it right here. Hmm. Yeah, so, you know, you typically can't get 4,000 down 750 feet of hose. Mm. So this will just adjust. It's really, really, is there really a jump simple. Jet on here? There is. Here's your jump jet. Okay. All right. You guys familiar with jump jet and what jump jet does? No. So, well, if you come over here, I can kind of show you. So jump jet serves two different, two different, uh, or two different options that you can do with the jump jet. Okay. So these two barrels are the jump jet. Jump jet's used for two different things, okay? When you turn jump jet on, what it's gonna do is it's gonna shut off the rest of these barrels where you're only using about 10% 10, 10 of the water. So it's used for two different things. If you're camming lines, you know exactly that you've got a, you know, you've got an obstruction 150 feet down, 125 feet down. You can turn on the jump jet to save water to get out to it. And then it'll also uh, beat up an obstruction to kind of clear it out. So it's really, really simple. Um, you've just got the side, the, uh, the toggle on the side here to turn it on and off. That's really it. Alrighty, so then uh, let's go to the wireless instructions. So here's your wireless radio, alrighty. Now the wireless radio is set up exactly like our control panel is, but there are just a couple different little things that you need to do to get it to work. So first of all, we pull it out so that's the two functions that you're on button as well as an emergency toggle all righty so it's going to show you exactly what to do right here so each one of these buttons has a corresponding number to it it's real real easy it tells you exactly what to do so it says hit five and six all righty so it's going to log in once it's logged in you've got a green light one more step you turn the radio on all righty which is telling it to talk green light means go We've got our green lights here, we're good to go. These are exactly the same as the buttons on here. So in order to start the machine, really, really simple guys, start, stop. Same thing, there's a three second delay. All righty, our machine's working. So water on off right here. It's gonna turn our water on. Now your PSI and the RPMs are definitely correlated again, right here, the same as the control panel. Alrighty. High is just gonna rev it up. See our PSIs are going up as well as our RPMs. Same thing, all the way down. Water off. Either start stop here, or if there's an emergency, you got your emergency kill switch. Shuts everything down. Alrighty. Keep in mind when you use the emergency kill switch, the whole system is going to have to be reset. All right, for it to go back on. All right. Typically, you don't have to do that. You know, that's if somebody's there. You know, an emergency happens, it shuts everything down in two seconds. All righty. So, um, a couple things to be aware of that we do have a wireless system now. So one of the new components is the wireless selector valve, all righty, which works the same exact as, as your old manual selector valve. Where's that? Right here. All righty, so the thing to be aware with this is never turn the water on and off unless you're at idle, okay? You don't want to turn the water on when the engine's all the way revved up, all right? And you can, if it's an emergency, you have to shut it off. I completely understand that. The point is, is this is a very expensive component. We don't want this thing toggling when there's 4,000 PSI of water going through it. 
We want to make sure that this is down at idle, which is about 1500 to 1800 RPMs. So it's really just so that there's not, you know, a lot of working on that switch. And, and, and really the point of that is just to extend this. This is going to wear out at some time. It's probably going to be thousands of hours. However, like our job is to make sure that your equipment is running as long as possible with no issues whatsoever. The best way to do that is just to make sure that you're turning your water on and off at idle. All righty. Is that under warranty? It is, yes, sir. Suppose we don't turn it on and off. Uh, uh, if we screw up. <clears throat> it's fine. Like I said, <laughs> under an emergency, <laughs> under an emergency situation, it's fine. You know, you just don't want to be doing it constantly because think about it. You're talking about 500 PSI turning a, a switch on or you're talking about 4,000 PSI turning the switch on. And just in time, what it's going to do, it's just going to wear that switch out. Yeah, you're welcome. No problem. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's the toggle. Yep. Uh, besides that, your mini jet kit is the same. There's only been one change on this pump since 1981. There are a little bit beefier bearings which is gonna get us a little bit more uh, life out of it. So we used to have two, we used to have a high, high altitude one for stuff in, uh, you know, like Vancouver and Colorado and Sierra Nevadas, which took a bigger bearing. We were like, you know what? We might as well just do it for the whole line. And we changed that in like 1990, so. Uh, besides that, that's really it. Um, you wanna go over the controls, show me how to do it? Yeah. Sometimes we have trouble getting cameras to a certain length. Uh -huh. Do, is it even, is, maybe I'm crazy, but I was thinking maybe you could attach a camera, like zip tie it to the end of a hose and use the jump that jet to pull it along. You ever hear people using it? I haven't seen that, that yet. Piggyback? No, I haven't. I mean, the yet. cameras are pr they're yeah. in a pretty durable, Yeah. you know, if you have a like low pressure. They're like a right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I could ask around. Yeah. A, a lot of guys like who do relining and whatnot. Yeah. Do that, and I just need—I don't really know. Yeah. Pretty. It happens a lot with the camera. Man, I can get more than thirty feet here. Yeah. But a jetter would definitely pull it out. Off. Yeah. Pull it along. <laughs> pretty easy. Pretty easy, right? The desk cut it off. Yep. Pretty simple. Yep. Is Arch. the password set in stone? It is. Okay. Yeah. You want to try it, Brendan? Me and him are running this thing mostly. Yeah, I get it. No yeah. worries. Yeah. And but keep in mind that I am always available to any one of you. If you have any question about anything, I'd much rather have you call me first or <laughs> and we figure it out, you know. Mm -hmm. So the enter. How do I go? Hit enter. The enter. Center. One of the middle. Yeah. There you go. Hit it again. Yep. One more time. Two more times. There you go. So you want to turn the water off first okay and then shut the engine off gotcha okay all right because that toggle is now toggled open okay so turn them back on yeah so on. yeah 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 yeah. so uh yep so hit her back up should you turn the water off Yeah, 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 yeah. 
You're good now. Yeah, they told us they're going to be updates, and it's like, you just kind of have to watch. So with the updated software, you no longer have to do that. That way it can just shut right off. Oh, okay. Because typically kind of the old way is if we turned it back on, the water still would have been on. Oh, okay. Because it's got the wireless, and once it got shut it's down, it'll talk up. Yeah, exactly. Is that normal? Is that ticking? It is. That's your uh, fuel pump. Okay. Yep. Got to stop after a while, I guess. Yep. Yeah. So what else, what else is different? So I don't know if that's an E180 necessarily. So now... You can take this out here and, and toggle this hose oh. reel around in all these different places. Wow, that's convenient. Yeah, so I ain't gonna you're not having a truck a... like this. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> yes, sir. Exactly. Gosh, that was nice. So now, wherever you're at, you know, yeah. you get 180 degrees. I think there's six different points one, two, three, four, five, six, where you can just lock it in. Good to go. There's a little holder right here for it as well. Okay. So you don't lose it. Yep. Put it there. And then just the main. Toggle lock is right there mm -hmm. with your little safety clip right here. What else is different? So this is the kitchen basket now. So the way this is designed, if you've got like some nasty nozzles or something, you don't want to put in your kit, you don't want to put in your toolboxes, just put it in here, kind of wash it out. It'll dry off on the way back. Mm -hmm. By the time you get back to the shop, put everything up, lock it down, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. um, let me see, so you've got your strobe light. Three different strobes on that. You've got your workstation light. You also have a manhole light now, which I don't think you had that before. Nope. I'm not sure how how they are up here about manholes, but some of my other clients up north, if they don't wash off their manhole cover, it's like a five thousand dollar fine. So manhole light nice. toggles out, swings around, can kind of look down, whatever you need to do with that. Also has a locking clip right here as well. And there you go. Where was that locked? Right here. Okay. So and then it comes out. So a few upgrades from the old one. All right, so let's see what else we've got that's maybe new or that you don't have. So we moved to the black tanks. So this is going to help with all your algae issues. Um, you know, you no longer have to put like a, an algae fighter or anything in the tank like you kind of used to with the, with the white ones. We're using bleach. Bleach, yeah, exactly. Same difference. Yeah. It's literally exactly the same. Um, what else? So you now have an 8,500 pound axle, which means you can tote this thing completely full with no issues. Alrighty. It is, yeah. So we also have these lug nut indicators now. For some reason, I don't know why, but stainless on stainless, they kind of tend to back off sometimes. Anybody who can, turns around probably knows that. Now it's a real quick visual check. Looks good. We're good to go. They're all to the right. Same thing on the other side. Besides that, guys, I mean, you've got your visual sight tank now. That's new. You've got your hose filled. I don't know where you guys get your, if you did do it for municipality or if you need the two inch, you just do it here. Gotcha. Toolboxes with keys. You know, we ask that you do your first service on this at 500 hours. And you might as well just do the pump and the engine and everything at the exact same time. On your engine, you've got all your key codes for all your filters and everything. Just checking this out right here. It's right here. Your seven pin? Yeah, it's already built in for it. We, we had an adapter. We had it. Oh, you did. This is well. This is good. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. You used to have to go in here and then up my truck. Oh, I got this you. This is already built pain. for that. Yeah. So you've got your electronic brakes. Yeah. yeah. And I don't remember. I would probably just see that. Yeah. Just keep in mind when you're not using this, if this is plugged in, I'm sure you know that. But I made that mistake when I first started. Do you do it now? Uh, well, just make sure it's in. Oh. I mean, you when you're not it using pops it. Out? Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It pops right. Oh, I knew that. Okay. So you can put it, pop it back in. Okay. Usually what I do is I just put a carabiner on it. So it's simple, so you're not having to do all that stuff, make it a little bit quick. So if this is out, there will be a, a slight drain on it. You don't want to leave it out, then you know have to jump off your battery or get a battery pack or something to that effect. I recommend staying on that type of support. I do recommend it. The less pressure and stuff that we put on this Fulton jack, 
it's just the longer it's gonna, you know. Where's that store at? That thing there, that big old stand. Is it a storage space you can put it somewhere? Uh, no. Like I said, typically it's just for shipping. Okay. But I always sure, tell my guys, if they sit here, you know what I mean? We could just, just put one and put it there and then park it and just put that up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. on the job, we'll just use that. Exactly. Yeah, that's fine. It'll be my truck the whole time anyway. My truck will be supporting the whole thing. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, because it'll already okay. be on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Besides that, it's pretty much the same, sir. It's nice, nice. Do we ever use this? We never use this to, to winterize it, have we? How do we ever use this before? I feel like I did come and teach the winterization. Maybe the first time I ever we, we came out a couple years ago. The side there was warm. So so we, we don't, don't winterize it. Winterize it. Yeah. All right. And it's not like it gets 20 below here. You know, it's like I have guys in Canada. What well, does? It's not 20 below, but it gets cold, cold. Yeah. We've had freezing issues with these. I think these got frozen and it had burst the seals. And it leaked a lot from freezing and expanding and you know contracting. Well, so this thing can can freeze solid. Oh yeah, and nothing nothing happens to it. Okay, nothing. it shouldn't break the seals. The only thing is it just needs to be hot completely, you know, before it starts back up. The way it works, so there's a there's a there's a barrel here, there's an inlet valve here, and a delivery valve here, and there's basically just a um, you know a ball bearing that moves back and forth. So if it does freeze. As long as it's thawed, there shouldn't be any damage. A lot of people don't know that. Like I've had guys who are, oh, you said it could freeze, and they try to start it up while it's still frozen, oh, wow. and then it blows. Yeah. So, do we have um, relief valve? You do. Okay. Yep. Where the, yeah. The so location? there's not same, so, same place. Yeah. So you've got the burst disc here. The burst disc. Yeah. Yep. There's not a, a release valve per se on this one. Well, this is a little disc in there. Yeah. yeah. They got wood those, I guess. Yeah, so here are your two high efficiency valve holes. And I gave you the so I gave you the six thousand psi burst discs. Same thing. Okay. So yeah, so these are a little bit beefier. Right. Because you've got this needler bypass valve, it can pressurize, it can handle a little bit more. You know, you don't need to the five thousand will, will kind of burst a little bit easier, I guess. Quicker. You guys want to Show me how to use the remote a couple more times before we go, just to make sure everybody's clear. Actually, let me 